In this video, we're going to make this 3D printed smart lamp. So this was a project that my wife wanted me to make that was a smart lamp that we could change the colors for, which I'll explain why we're going to use it for later. But the design of this project was actually from this link in Amazon. It was for a lamp that cost $50 and it was made of plastic, not glass. And I thought, hey, I could totally make this with 3D printing. All I needed for this project was a corded socket light. And I so happened to have one that I saved for many years from an old Ikea trip and an old pendant light that I had thrown away. But I thought, hey, this socket light might come in handy one day. And sure enough, I'm using it for this project. I have a link below for the exact same cord that I purchased from Ikea. They still sell it, as well as the model for this project on Thingiverse. This house was built in Fusion 360, and this part is a bit long, so I won't blame you guys if you want to fast forward this part. But if you want to see how I made uh, this house and the process of going through it, this is it right here. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit in fast forward, but you kind of get the idea how I first start with a flat rectangle dimension, and here I'm centering the socket hole for the center here. And Currently, I'm making a reference line where I'm going to be figuring out where the peak of the house is. And then from there, I could find the center and figuring out uh, the angle that I want, which is 45 degrees. And that's going to be the roof of the house. And here I'm going to be starting to cut away at the excess rectangle and finishing out the peak. And What's really cool in Fusion is this shell command. So when you have a solid object, you can basically turn it into a shell and select how thick you want it. I love that. And then here, I'm creating a base to make the house a little bit more rigid. At this point, the model was done. But I think I was playing around with it, and I wanted to see if I could be a little bit more creative. And I knew this was going to be a lamp, and the light was going to be shining through the plastic. So I thought, maybe it's a house. Maybe we create a window and a door, and I could uh, have it at different thicknesses of the plastic. So when the light shines through, uh, it would be a little bit brighter in those areas. So when the light turns on, you would kind of get all this detail in it. And then when it was turned off, you might not see these uh, indents as much. And... Uh, I thought it was a neat idea, but in the end, I just decided simple was better. So maybe when you guys model it out, you guys might try to change it and play around with that. So what you see here is a program called Prusa Slicer. If you guys aren't familiar with 3D printing, this is like the print utility that you send your file to, and the printer utility tells the printer how to take that 3D model and how to lay down the plastic. It takes account the type of plastic you're using, the temperature for the heat, uh, and for the heat of the nozzle, as well as how tall that I want those layers of plastic to be. And you save out these files in G code and transfer them to a SD card and bring them to the printer. Oh man, wasn't that so satisfying to see? Well, the process of making that lamp wasn't actually so easy. Here in this photo, you can see all the iterations that I had and failures that I had along the way. There were parts that were too thick and the light didn't kind of come through. And then there were pieces that were too thin and the house would just buckle on itself, as well as different colored plastics that didn't really work so well. And here is the finished lamp and how you're supposed to use it. Our goal was to use the Philips Hue bulb on a schedule for red for when our toddler should still stay in bed and sleep some more and green 
when it was time for him to wake up and come and jump into mom and dad's bed. If you liked the video so far, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I don't put out a lot of videos throughout the year, so I won't be hitting you with alerts constantly. Uh, if you guys follow my channel, you know that most of my projects involve 3D printing and a little bit of woodworking. For the woodworking part of this project, I was going to make a more permanent lampshade, I guess you call it, for the top of this house. Uh, similar to the book that you saw earlier that you kind of open and hold your page and kind of put it right in the peak of the house. But instead, I'm going to use this walnut plywood. And my thought here is to basically try to recreate the similar size of the book that was on there. So I'm just cutting a rectangle sheet of plywood and then cutting it in half uh, with a miter, which is a 45 degree angle on both sides so that when it's combined together, it makes a 90 degree angle and the grain continues from one side over to the other. This is one of my favorite tips that I learned, is to use blue painter's tape when you're, when you're gluing up any kind of mitered corner. This helps align the edges together so that when you fold them together it lines up perfectly, there's no guesswork, and also it helps glue not spill out on one side. You could also, if you don't have these corner clamps here, you could just tape it up. Um, it, it, this isn't like a huge stressed corner piece, so it's not a big deal. I just had them so I used it. Since I used walnut plywood for this project, you see the inside of the layers of the plywood and I didn't really want to see that so here I'm roughly cutting out some edge banding strips that have a glue on one side that's activated when you apply heat or an iron. So here I roughly cut it out and now I'm adding these mitered corners on there so it'll match the sides of the rooftop here. Uh, I'm just trying to be careful that I remember which orientation that I'm cutting it so that the grain can follow along the same way. So I'm just marking 45s in here to see how it lines up. And here I'm lining it up to the corner and just applying heat and then pushing it down, rubbing it all down with another piece of wood. And it's really easy, even if you're here, if you're not exactly aligned as 45, you can kind of just push the edge together and then trim off the excess with a utility blade. There you go. Just sliding, cutting it, getting as close to the edge as I can, and then following up with the chisel to clean up the sides. When you're doing any edge banding, sanding is so critical at the end because it actually blends the edge band to the flat layer on the other side. Uh, it's what makes it more believable. Uh, otherwise, sometimes if you just cut it without sanding it, you get this very thin layer of glue. So my, only, my advice is always to try to trim as closely as you can and then always follow up with sanding on the edges. This is always one of the most satisfying parts of a project, applying finish to wood. It just comes alive and rain pops and all this color of the wood that we know comes out. What was gray and dull before just becomes so colorful and contrasty. I love this part. Thanks so much guys for checking out this video. Uh, it means a lot to me. If you guys want to make this house, it's free on Thingiverse. Uh, link below. And if you like 3D printing and woodworking, there's more videos like this on my channel. Bye.